Welcome to the GeoFlow video series, Making Geothermal Easier. In this video, we'll be discussing flush cart operation as it pertains to flushing pressurized flow centers. Thank you for joining us. Safety should be your number one concern when using the flush cart. Let's take a look at some considerations. First off, I always use a grounded electrical outlet. The flush cart plug is equipped with a ground connection and is designed for a 15 amp breaker. Never attempt to disable the ground fault circuitry. Failure to observe safety precautions may result in fire, injury, or death. When using the flush cart, consider safety when handling antifreeze. Acceptable antifreezes are propylene glycol, ethanol, and methanol. Never handle or mix antifreeze in an enclosed space. Pure methanol and ethanol are extremely flammable and the fumes or vapors can ignite. Only use pre-mixed or non-flammable antifreeze with the flush cart. Use appropriate safety devices including eye protection. Failure to observe safety precautions may result in fire, injury, or death. Thank you for your attention. The step-by-step -step instructions used in this video are available on GeoFlow's website at www.geo-flo.com in the literature section. Okay, let's get started flushing. Our flushing setup for the video includes the GeoFlow flush cart on the left. Today we'll be flushing a geothermal closed loop system with a pressurized flow center. However, a non-pressurized flow center is very similar. The ground loop is attached to the top of the flow center for this installation. Some installations may have the ground loop coming in from the bottom and the flow center would be turned 180 degrees from this picture. Finally, we have a hose kit connecting the flow center to the heat pump. Generally, we try to flush the lowest point in the system first so that if there is any air introduced, it rises to the top. In this case, the lowest point would be the heat pump piping. However, for simplicity and demonstration purposes of this video, we'll be flushing the ground loop since it's the most difficult to flush. We'll be using the 100 micron filter when we flush to remove any debris, pipe shavings, or soil that may have entered the system during installation. Now we're ready to insert the cam adapter into the flush cart hose. Next, we'll lubricate the fittings for a proper seal. Once lubricated, insert the cam adapter fitting into the flow center flush port and secure with the female nut. It's important to keep the pump terminal boxes dry. We like to use a towel above the terminal boxes when we connect the flush cart hoses to the flow center. We'll be using a flow link double o-ring flow center in this video, but some installations include a threaded type flow center like the one shown in the picture. When using a flow center with threaded connections, GeoFlow has adapters for flow link double o-ring by thread. Simply thread in the adapter, and now the Flowlink double O ring cam adapters for the flush cart hoses can easily be used. We've now connected the flush cart hoses to the flow center using the cam by flow link double o-ring adapters. Notice that the ball valves are in the off position. We're now ready to fill the ground loop by connecting the garden hose to the flush cart. Next we'll rotate the three-way valves on the flow center so that the heat pump circuit is isolated and fluid is directed towards the ground loop only. Notice that the off position is at the bottom which are the connections to the heat pump. Insert a pressure gauge with a large dial face and PT adapter into the PT port on the flush cart. Close the half inch pump and dump valve to the left of the pressure gauge when complete.
ensure that the bag filter is in place on the return PVC pipe. Geoflow recommends looping the bag filter strap over the top of the return piping. Close the 2 inch tank isolation valve and open the pump discharge valve as well as the inch and a half deadhead valve. Also open the ball valves at the end of the flush cart hoses if equipped. And now we're ready to start filling the loop. Open the half inch fill valve and allow the loop to fill. Watch the fluid level in the tank via the sight tube. When the tank is nearly full, shut off the half inch fill valve and also the one and a half inch supply valve, also called the pump discharge valve. Open the two inch tank isolation valve and energize the pump. Slowly open the inch and a half supply valve approximately one quarter to one half turn. Air and debris will be pushed through the return piping. Debris will be captured in the filter bag and air will be released to the atmosphere. Note that the water typically looks cloudy when there is still air entrained in the fluid. Regulate the fluid level in the tank with the half inch fill valve and the one and a half inch supply valve while the pump is running. Do not allow the fluid in the tank to drop too low or air will be pushed back into the loop, extending flushing time. Note that when the pump is running, any air remaining in the loop will be pressurized. Therefore, if the pump is powered off during the flushing process, the compressed air will expand, pushing the loop fluid back into the tank. This could cause the tank to overflow. If the pump must be shut off during the process, close the inch and a half supply valve and the inch and a half deadhead return valve to prevent fluid from returning to the tank. When the fluid level remains relatively stable, ensure that the inch and a half supply valve is fully open. Allow the pump to operate until the fluid returning to the tank appears clear and free of air. When the pump is running, deadhead the pump by turning off the deadhead or return valve. Then quickly reopen the valve, allowing the fluid to return to the tank. This process drives the loop pressure up, thereby compressing any air remaining in the loop. Quickly opening the valve creates a sudden high velocity surge that helps dislodge air into the fluid stream where it can be returned to the tank. Repeat the deadhead process two to three times over a period of 15 minutes. If necessary, add more fluid to the tank so the fluid level is visible in the sight tube. With the pump continuing to run, mark the fluid level in the tank with the O-ring on the sight tube. Close the inch and a half deadhead valve while watching the fluid level in the sight tube. The deadhead process drives the static loop pressure to approximately 50 psi. Since fluid is incompressible but air can be compressed, this procedure shows whether air remains in the loop. In general, the fluid should not drop more than about 3 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch on a typical residential system. The slight drop in fluid is due to the expansion of the ground loop piping and the actual drop will depend upon the loop size, that is how much total pipe is in the loop, and also fluid temperature. Open the one and a half inch deadhead valve and allow the fluid to continue to circulate. Note that if the preceding procedure is unsuccessful in removing all air from the loop, power flushing may be necessary. Another video on power flushing is available on GeoFlow's video website. Rotate the three-way valves on the flow center so that the ground loop is now isolated and fluid is directed towards the heat pump only. As mentioned earlier, the lowest point of the system should be flushed first. So depending upon the location of the heat pump with regard to where the loop piping is, this may change on your specific installation. For flushing the heat pump, repeat the steps that we just did on the ground loop side. Rotate the three-way valves on the flow center so that the fluid is directed towards both the ground loop and the heat pump. Off should be towards the back of the flow center. Once again, repeat the steps we used in flushing the ground loop 
to ensure that all air has been purged from the ground loop and heat pump system. Now that the air has been purged from the system, additional filtering may be required if fine sand, silt, or clay is still in the system. Geoflow offers a one micron filter that may be used for additional filtering. Close the one and a half inch deadhead valve, then close the inch and a half supply valve or pump discharge valve to trap pressure in the system. Finally, turn off the pump. Using a large flathead screwdriver, slightly open the vent screw on the face of the Grunfoss pump. After a few drops of water escape, retighten the screw. Note that this step is critical. Opening the vent screw and allowing fluid to drip out ensures that all trapped air has exited the pump motor. Skipping this important step could lead to premature pump failure. Monitor the pressure gauge for 10 to 15 minutes. The pressure should not drop substantially, typically no more than about 3 to 4 psi. The slight pressure drop is due to the loop pipe relaxing and is normal. If there is substantial pressure drop, there is likely a leak in the system. Inspect all piping connections in the mechanical room for signs of fluid and correct any issues discovered. If there is a leak in a flush cart connection, the flush cart should be isolated from the system. Then the pressure gauge can be installed in a PT port at the heat pump to monitor pressure. If planning to add antifreeze, skip the next few steps and leave the flush cart hoses connected. Close the ball valves on the flush cart hoses and rotate the three-way valve so that the flush cart is isolated from the system. The off position will now be facing the flush port. Open the inch and a half supply and return valves to relieve pressure in the hoses. With the ball valves closed on the flush cart hoses, remove the flush cart hoses from the flow center. Thank you for watching the GeoFlow video series. For more information, check out our website at www.geo-flo.com.